What's up guys, I'm Dimitri with Hard Rock Canucks and as much as I and you guys love to see the progression of enthusiast flagship graphics cards and uh, the trickle down improvements for the lower end SKUs as well, the mass market isn't interested in purchasing a $600 plus graphics card. Instead, the sales volume is so much stronger between $199 and a $299 product that that uh, is a very interesting market uh, segment in itself and that is what we're talking about today. And so this price range is crucial that has seen AMD pushing strong with the RX 480 and now being challenged by Nvidia with the GTX 1060. And so if you're on the verge of an upgrade, which one of these two should you choose? Yuck. Cable mod configurator allows you to select only the cables you need with your choice of mod flex sleeving that is very flexible or mod mesh that is more vibrant. Then you choose your length and color combination. Custom cables just got more custom with the cable mod configurator. So Nvidia's pricing structure with the 1060 follows in the same footsteps as the 1080 and the 1070 having a substantial price premium for the Founders Edition or the reference card at $299, which is the card we have here, while promising cards from board partners starting from $249 at launch. This does shift the price to AMD's favor since the 4 and 8 gigabyte variants on the RX 480 are at $199 and $239 respectively that grants the 480 an immediate value advantage but still not too far from the custom 1060s at 249. On paper, the GTX 1060 is a massive upgrade over the 960 with 1280 quarter cores, 6GB of RAM, that's a GDDR5 RAM, base clock of 1506 and boost of 1708MHz and the TDP of 120 watts. And it's super interesting to see the quarter core count in this Pascal line, so if a GTX 1050 was ever to be released, how many quarter cores will it have? 720? Now, in comparison with the RX 480, which has a slightly higher TDP, but more VRAM and a faster memory bus, the GTX 1060 looks like a strong competitor, especially since Nvidia claims it'll compete with the performance of a GTX 980. Both cards require a single 6-pin for power, and AMD has addressed the power delivery issues over the PCIe, so no need to worry. Then comparing the I.O. on the reference cards, we have 3 DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0, plus the 1060 has a DVI, while the reference 480 doesn't, but custom 480 cards will seem to include a DVI connector. The PCB on both cards is about 7 inches with a heatsink extending further that paves the way for even shorter GPUs with custom coolers. Can't wait for that, ITX versions on the rise. One significant difference between the two cards is multi-GPU support. AMD has framed the RX 480 to be a worthy competitor versus the GTX 1080 when the uh, 480s are in crossfire. However, the GTX 1060 has no SLI support. This is a single only GPU solution. This could hurt Nvidia in the long run since DX12 and multi-GPU scaling is becoming better, uh, but this could be one of those things where they try to see if no SLI compatibility hurts the sales of the GTX 1060. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, Nvidia has made sure to separate the 1060 from the higher end SKUs like the 1070. So let's jump into the benchmarks and see how it stacks up against the RX 480 eight gigabytes. First, let's start with 1080p at DX11. Keep an eye between the purple bar, which is the GTX 1060 and the orange bar, which is the RX 480 and their respective positioning within our full stack. And as promised, the GTX 1060 is very competitive against its own GTX 980, while the RX 480 is more in line with the GTX 970. Bumping the resolution to 1440p and the gap between the two cards closes, with the GTX 1060 still taking a close lead and there are a few titles where the gap widens again, as older GTX 980 and the 390X meander in between. Now what about DX12 at 1080p? Here we see the RX 480 squeezing some muscles, but uh, keep in mind this sample size for games is still quite small, with Tomb Raider showing advantage on Pascal cards. At 1440p the trend continues, with the RX 480 taking the lead over the 1060, especially in Hitman, 
but once again we open tomb raider and it shows much better optimization on the green side and with gaming out of the way the gtx 1060 is a much more power efficient card which could really benefit anyone who wants an easy drop and upgrade while the rx 480 slots well between it and the 1070. comparing reference coolers for noise levels the gtx 1060 is both quieter and cooler staying at 71 degrees celsius at load while the rx 480 was at 83 degrees celsius and the final graph for this comparison is a price to performance chart with the rx 480 doing very well at 239 for both the x11 and 12 while the gtx 1060 spans a wider price bracket and therefore the founder's edition 50 dollars premium makes the card way too expensive while the cheaper 249 makes it a fantastic option the Dark Base 900 may be the most innovative case of the year with a built-in Qi charger, interior lighting, tempered glass that can be installed on either side, and a fully modular interior that can be inverted if you so desire. Be quiet. Stepping up their game, check it out in the description below. And so where does it leave us? The RX 480 right now is in short supply, which you know allows Nvidia's GTX 1060 swoop in to be uh, in good timing with healthy performance and good price, as long as retailers for both sides don't mark up uh, the cards based on low stock or high demand or whatever else. 249 for the GTX 1060 is a fantastic value, especially with DX11. In DX12, it suffers uh, versus the 480, but again, our sample size was so little that it's not totally conclusive, and we'll have to wait and see for more DX12 testing to come in the future. But which one would you choose? Again, come back to that question, the 480 or the 1060. Let us know in the comments down below. I'm Dimitri with Harakonux. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.